<clears throat> okay, so the experiment is called, or answers the question, do forum profile links have any juice? Again, it's an experiment by me, and uh, there's my contact information. So, the experiment is about the orange platoon cucumber. What's that? Well, it's not this platoon. The orange platoon cucumber is a fictional... Uh, vegetable, I guess, or fruit that uh, uh, we came up with. And uh, I've made a complete search ecosystem for it with a number of sites that uh, we could use to test to see uh, a number of things, not the least of which is do forum profile links have any uh, juice? Do they help a site rank or do they de-rank a site? So uh, we started this back in November, actually. And on uh, December 10th, all the uh, blogs had finally been inspired. So let me just quickly go over what we had done. First, and you notice something very interesting. We had um, made uh, three Blogspot blogs, and then we made three WordPress blogs. And then we also made a uh, exclusive match domain, which is just, just the query in question, Orange Platoon Cucumber. We made another Blogspot blog for that as well. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, so none of the links have no links have been sent to these sites yet at this point. And from here you can see that um, first off, for some reason, very interestingly, Google has spidered them. Uh, we made the WordPress blogs first, and then we made the Blogspot blogs second. So uh, the Blogspot blogs are ranking; uh, they're made uh, sooner, and so they're ranking up close to the top. Uh, but for some reason, Google has ordered them one, two, and three. I don't know why this is exactly, and it's hard for me to say. Uh, one would have been made before two, would have been made before three, so one technically is older than three, so it's not like the newest one. So for some reason, they seem to alphanumeric sort them, which is very interesting that uh, Google would do that. But uh, unfortunately, I can't say any more about that. That's just speculation on my part. But. Um, and then the WordPress uh, blogs are after that. So also, just uh, and I'll be reading, I'll be uh, going over this again as we go on in the experiment. But just so you know, Blogspot one is a single article with no images and no movies. Blogspot two is an article with an image, and Blogspot three is an article with an image and a movie. They're all they're all uniquely written, uh, over 500 words or so uh, about the orange platoon cucumber, which of course doesn't exist. It's a fictitious uh, vegetable that I had my writers write about. And so those are the quality of the articles on these three blogs. Uh, Orange Platoon Cucumber at blogspot.com, that has nothing. It's an empty EMD. There is no article. WordPress 2 is an empty EMD. There is no article. Uh, and WordPress 3 is an empty EMD. There's no article. There's also a WordPress 1, but it, it hasn't shown up on the, uh, on the search for some reason. The search is not cut off. This is the only uh, uh, pages that show up. Okay. So, so four days later, we can already see there's some changes that have been made. First off, you'll notice that uh, it's now doing the autocomplete. It wasn't doing the autocomplete before, but now it's doing the autocomplete on Cucumber or Cucumbers. Also, you'll notice that uh, after only four days later, and there's again, there's no links yet, the, uh, Google has, for some reason, rated Orange Platoon Cucumber, the, the EMD, uh, higher than one of the later blocks. So the freshness, the, the new site freshness of the uh, Blogspot 1, Blogspot 2 and Blogspot 3 have reduced, if that's indeed what was making them rank higher, which I think it was. And the exact match EMD is starting now to move, move up higher, even though it's completely empty. Okay, so then what I wanted to do was, of course, test for forum profile links. So I started sending forum profile links to these sites. So, so about one month later, this is what the uh, SERP looked like. And you can see it looks strikingly different. Now, some links have been spidered, and at this time, there was anywhere from 30 to 50 links spidered out of the full 170 links that I was going to make in total. So, now let's take a look at how things have changed. You notice that the exact match domain, the exclusive match domain, with just the query uh, and no additional characters or anything, has moved up to the very top. Then it's been followed by WordPress, which is an empty EMD with no links. 
then blogspot1, which has been sent uh, a certain kind of link. Uh, blogspot1, I sent it links with uh, no text at all, just the exact match query. Blogspot3 is the next one. I sent it uh, links with completely spun backlinks, well-spun backlinks, uh, human readable. So Blogspot3 is supposed to be our, our best one. And Blogspot2, this one we sent it links with complete duplicated text. So for some reason it's reorganized the, uh, the, the blogs in this way. And again, I'm going to come to the speculation as to why that is in a little bit. And then the WordPress blogs, again, these are all empty blogs. They have nothing on them. So this was a month after linking, but not all the links had been spidered yet. So we waited a little bit longer. Okay, so nine days later from then, on January 23rd, um, it had been constant for the last nine days that 100 links were reported, and it was constant at 100. So out of the 240 forum profile uh, uh, accounts that I got in Nuke, 170 of them made uh, verified successful links, and then when I sent those to the indexer, 100 of those uh, eventually, now at this point in the experiment, were shown uh, indexed in Google, and I know that because I put an alphanumeric uh, code in each of the links so I could tell when they were spired and if they were spired and how many were spired. So, and again, you notice the um, the the SERP has changed again when all the links have been reported. We'll notice that again the exclusive EMD is still up at the top. This is an empty EMD with no links. The uh, WordPress the empty EMD is uh, uh, under that, and then the spun link, good article with a movie and an uh, image, is at the top here. Uh, for the blog spot this is the one we were sending links to. Then a WordPress, then another uh, uh, duplicate from the same place, uh, um, and then uh, the blog spot one, which is the links with no text whatsoever, just the exact match query. And then it's a bunch of WordPress, uh, and then the uh, Blogspot 2, which is the links that are text duplicate links. And you notice at the bottom, speaking of those links, here's one of them right here. At the very bottom, Gene's uh, Sausage Shop and Delicatessen, this is one of the forum profile links that uh, Google is showing up. So, January 23rd, 100 of the links have been reported. That had been constant for the last nine days. So at that point, I figured the um, experiment is just about ready to, to share with everybody because it's been constant. I thought, okay, you know, it made sense. They showed 20 links, then 30, then 50, and finally they showed 100, and then that didn't change for nine days. So I thought, okay, fine. They finally spidered all the links. And obviously they, they, show, uh, they hold some value with the links because they're even showing one of them at the bottom here. Now, you'll notice another thing. You notice that the titles are duplicated. The title between here, a review by Sam Stopper, is duplicated between here, WordPress and Blogspot. That was done by accident by my virtual assistant, but it's actually a very happy accident because it actually shows some very interesting things uh, in, uh, later on that I'm going to get to. But because this didn't make any sense to me, because Orange Plat uh, Platoon Cucumber, this has no links and no article. This one has no links and no article, the, the WordPress 3. The, the one with, with links and an article uh, is this Blogspot 3. This is the one that I thought should be outranking everything else because it has links pointing directly to it. Although you notice I pointed links directly to Orange Platoon Cucumbers 3 Blogspot.com. I did not point any links to this subpage, which is what the actual article is, even though it shows up on the, on the root. You notice that Google automatically selected the subpage uh, because it's more on the topic, I suppose, or I have some speculations as to why that is uh, later on as well. So right now we're just going to notice all the differences. So um, I couldn't figure this out. Why is it that this empty EMD and this empty EMD are outranking this EMD that has links and an actual article? It's not empty. So I figured, well, it could have something to do with the duplicate titles. So then what I did is I asked my virtual assistant, uh, Vincent, very nice guy, to change all the titles and that way maybe the rankings would change. So we'll see that. So about 20 days later, most of the titles have changed now. And uh, not all of them. You see we still have uh, two duplicates here between WordPress 1 and Blogspot 1. 
But most of the titles, most of the pages have been re-indexed at that point, re-spidered and re-indexed, and most of the changes, uh, titles have been changed. But you notice, oddly enough, that this, this did not really change the top rankers for the, um, for the, the positions in the SERP. The exclusive EMD is still at the top. WordPress 3, which is an empty EMD, there is no article here, is still at the top. It's still outranking Blogspot 3, which has both an article with an image and a video in it, and the forum profile links. So the question is, what exactly is going on here? What precisely is going on? Now, this is where, at that point, this is where the, um, the SERP had more or less stayed for, for many weeks. Um, so this is what seemed to me to be, uh, in quotations, the final state, or the, the, the final state at that time. Remember, there's no usage metrics to, to deal with here. And just to show you that um, there's no other factors going on here, this is a screenshot of the same SERP uh, hitting one particular data, data center um, that uh, is in a different browser, incognito, in uh, Chrome, on a different IP address, with, without being logged in, you see there's no login, so there's no personalization, there's a different computer, so there's no cookie, and there's no change, right? This SERP is the same as this SERP. So Blogspot, the exclusive EMD, outranks the WordPress 3, which is the empty EMD, which outranks the Blogspot 3, which is our good article, which has a links to it, which outranks WordPress 1, which outrank, which is an empty EMD, which outranks Blogspot 1, which is our article with just a straight arc text article with uh, no text backlinks pointing at it, about 100 of them, as far as I can tell. And then that outranks uh, numerous selections from WordPress 2. And Blogspot 2 doesn't even show up. Now, so here's some questions. Why exactly is the WordPress 3, the empty EMD, outranking an exact match domain that also has content and direct links? I think a good piece of evidence to answer that question is if you take a look at this. This is the uh, familiar uh, SERP uh, um, SEO competition screen from Market Samurai, which uses Majestic SEO data. And if you look at WordPress.com in general, for that root domain, WordPress.com, whatever it is, uh, all those subdomains aside, just for WordPress, all the links pointing to WordPress.com in total, there's over 2 million linking root domains to, uh, to WordPress.com. And that's uh, as opposed to the links that are pointing to blogspot.com. And also 100,000 of these links are also from educational or governmental institutions because you remember WordPress is very popular in, in, uh, in universities. So a lot of that link juice is coming from universities as well. So I think that could be a good reason why Word, uh, WordPress 3 here is outranking um, our Blogspot 3. Even though the Blogspot 3, even though this is empty, and this one has an article and links pointing directly to it. It's because WordPress.com is a much more powerful domain. That could be the reason why. The next question is what happened to Blogspot 2? Blogspot 2, which is uh, which was showing up uh, here uh, uh, January 23rd with 100 links reported, Blogspot 2 has uh, 100 or at this time, had 100 links pointing to it, <clears throat> January 23rd, uh, 100 links pointing to it, but all those are, those are duplicated links. So what happened to it on February 13th, you notice it doesn't show up at all. Where I cut it off here is where it cut off. It said that it gave it image results and other results. That it was just a, one of these uh, uh, reduced SERPs that uh, people like Dr. Pete Myers have been complaining about for the last little while, that Google, they don't have, apparently if they don't have enough information or enough uh, quality pages to serve on a particular SERP, they'll limit it. They'll say, okay, here's the best seven, here's the top eight, top seven, that's it, that's all you're gonna get. So the question is, what happened to Blogspot 2? I couldn't get it to show up on February 13th until I changed the query to be show the top 100. If I Asked it to show the top 10, all it showed was up to WordPress 2, and they would show these images for platoon cum uh, for orange platoon cucumber. When I changed it, the, the uh, search query string to it, from equaling numbers equal 10 to number equal 100, then and only then could I get it to actually show orange platoon cucumbers 2. Now, 
This is not a duplicate article. This is a unique article. The only difference between Orange Platoon, uh, platoon Cucumber 2 and, say, Orange Platoon Cucumber 1, which is showing up, block spot 1 here, which is showing up, is that this one has a bunch of links pointing to it that are, or that are completely duplicated. Like as if you send out a press release that was completely duplicated with links pointing back. That would be the exact same thing here with, uh, orange, uh, with the blog spot 2. Whereas blog spot 1 has no text at all. It just has the exact match query uh, links with no spun text or duplicate text, no text whatsoever except for the link. So the question is, well, why, why is that? I think this starts to show some of the reason why. Here's the alphanumeric code I put in the spun links. So blogspot3 is the one with the spun, the good quality spun links, and here's an example of them. You can see how they're all, you know, they're all spun, all the different ones here. You know, blah, 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 this is different from this, different from this, different from this. And this is the alphanumeric code I put in them, because these are the spun links, right? You notice that there's 100 of them. So out of the 170 that are made, 100 are reported in the index. I can only guess that about 70 of the foreign profile sites Google has just discounted as invalid uh, linking back sources, or uh, they have a no index on the page, or something that's uh, disallowing Google from index indexing those links, even though I sent them to the index in it, the X indexer. So that's the spun links. But when we take a look at the straight links on this date, February 13th, we notice that the straight links, there's only 50, only 55 reported, which is interesting because January 23rd, Back when Blogspot 2 was showing up on the SERP, 100 were reported. That's why I didn't bother taking a screenshot at the time, because I figured, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, it, it showed very clearly for, for, for this one, the spun code, and this one, the straight code, it was showing up, you know, 30 links, 50 links, 100 links, and it stayed at around 100 for both of them for, for nine days solid. And it had cha been changing daily up to that point, because that's when I indexed them. So I figured, okay, well, that makes sense, and that's where they'll stay, but no. I noticed that at the time I was going to make this this uh, this experiment, that suddenly 50 links or so had been dropped, and so that could be why one of the reasons why Blogspot 2 is not showing up on the February 13th SERP, right? Blogspot 2 is not showing up, and there could be another reason as well that it wouldn't show up until I set it to show me the full 100 results, and then and only then did it float Blogspot 2 at the very, very bottom of the SERP. Okay, so let's review. <clears throat> so on February 23rd, when the experiment was finally done, and most of the titles had been changed, now you see not all of them have been changed. The uh, WordPress 1 here and Blogspot 1 were still duplicated, but, they, but most of the titles had been changed and had been respired. Here's where the SERP played out at the, at the quote-unquote end of the experiment. The one that's ranking on the top is the exclusive EMD. This is an empty EMD. There's no article at this, this spot. But you'll notice that it best matches Orange Platoon Cucumber as the query, Orange Platoon Cucumber in the URL with no extra S or, or a 3 or anything like that. The next is more domain juice. So this one is the WordPress 3. The only reason why I can uh, suggest it's here is that it has more domain juice. WordPress.com is just a much more powerful domain. It could be that you'll notice the title has a positive uh, sentiment in it. It's Orange Platoon Cucumbers, a good review of these fruit. It could be that uh, Google is doing some kind of sentiment analysis. I'm not sure. Or it could be that it's a little bit older. See, it was made November 20th. It's a composed, as opposed to the 29th. This could be some age. Uh, for it uh, outranking, but but I doubt it. I think it's probably the case that there are many, many, many more millions of links pointing to WordPress.com as a domain than there are pointing to Blogspot.com. And then here's the top one that we uh, were trying to make in part of the experiment. This is the Blogspot 3. Again, this is the one that has the image in it and the video, so it's the highest in quotations quality article in terms of just straight analysis of the content. Again, there's no analysis of the usage metrics, because remember, there is no usage metrics. No one is searching for this except for me, and I only click through once or twice on, on uh, one or two of them. So I strongly doubt that's having an effect in terms of usage metrics. That, that can't, well, it, it could, but I, I can't see that having much of an effect, one or two clicks, comparatively. If one of them had 10,000 clicks, maybe it would, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But for now, 
orange uh, blogspot three is the one with the best article and has the spun the, the best spun exact match query links. Then out under that is uh, WordPress one, which again is an MTEMD. It could be uh, uh, the the query deserves diversity algorithm that's kind of mixing them up like this, but um, it was pretty constant for the top uh, three or four rankers for the last uh, for most of uh, a month or two months. Then uh, Blogspot one. This is the one where we send no text exact match query links. All of the ones here, Blogspot 3, Blogspot 1, and Blogspot 2, all got exact match query links. Oh, that said Orange Platoon Cucumber. That was the anchor text for the link. All of them had that. 100%. No variation. The only difference was this one had spun backlink text around it. This one had no backlink text around it. And the duplicate, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the blog with the duplicate text, uh, uh, the blog Blogspot 2 had duplicate text around it. And then finally at the bottom of the SERP we'll notice that uh, Google probably doesn't think there's very much uh, quality uh, in these results or not a lot of results to show and so it's not sure, it's, I don't know what you want here, fine. So it's throwing up uh, three uh, selections from WordPress 2 which again these are all empty, right? Except that it's the word that the way that WordPress archives everything and tags everything up, there's like numerous different URLs you can get the same content on, even though this is there is no content, it's empty, except for the uh, except for the uh, the boilerplate that will come with a standard install of WordPress, like the RSS feed and all this uh, different date and, and stuff like that. That's the only content in quotations that that's there. There is no article that we didn't post any article there. So that's how the SERP ended up on February 23rd. So, what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, from, from the way the SERP ended up here and, and what we know is going on in the background because we controlled everything that's going on in the background, this is what we can conclude. It seems that we can conclude that form profile links seem to work uh, perfectly well if they're spun naturally. Because you remember, Blogspot 3 uh, did rank quite highly in the experiment, just under the exclusive EMD and under the, the EMD that had more domain juice in total. And there, this is how I can say that. It, because it, if, if all forum profile links were totally devalued, if that was true, then Blogspot 3 would be ranking, would be totally gone and ranking where number 2 is. Remember, Blogspot 2 won't even show up unless I do, uh, uh, at, at this time, Blogspot 2 wouldn't even show up unless I do a uh, num equals 100 search. If uh, all uh, forum profile links were devalued, all of them, Blogspot 3 and Blogspot 1, would show up, totally be removed from the search. But they're not. Only Blogspot uh, 2 was removed from the search because it has the completely duplicated uh, text backlinks. Which leads me to the next point, is that non-spun duplicate text backlinks seem to be susceptible to a greater deindexation and even some kind of uh, devaluation of those links because Blogspot 2 wouldn't even show up on the SERP. Not, not that it would show up last, it wouldn't even show up unless I did a search equals 100 and forced Google to give me extra results to show. However, one very interesting point that I'm going to get to in a second is that well, how, how, the, how do the SERPs look now? And I checked on March uh, 1st and again today, which is March 3rd, and I noticed that Blogspot uh, 2 is back on the SERP. And so I checked again and the, the backlinks are back. So it's not that the links, uh, the backlinks are totally de-indexed and discounted. They seem to fluctuate. So this makes very little sense. I'm going to get to this in a second. So this is kind of the, uh, an after experiment I'll do after this, going over this experiment. And another thing much to our, my surprise, I thought the no text backlinks wouldn't rank at all. I thought if anything was going to get devalued, it would be the no text backlinks. The no text backlinks are again just a form profile with no no profile description, just the exact match query anchor text. In this case, that was orange platoon cucumber. However, it didn't. It wasn't removed entirely. <clears throat> it wasn't removed entirely. It simply had it, it, it ranked twenty to thirty percent worse than. Um, than the original. It shows up here. Blogspot 1 is the one with uh, no text backlinks. It showed up just a few spots under Blogspot 3, which is the one with full spun backlinks. And again, Blogspot 2, which doesn't show up at all at this date, 
unless I do the num equals 100, this is the one that had duplicate backlinks. So the no text backlinks ranked worse at around uh, 20 or 30 percent. Why is that? Well, my guess would be is that there's not as much a semantic signal. There's not as many words that uh, Google uses in terms of uh, co-citation to tell it what this link is, is about in terms of the context. And there could be some kind of thin content evaluation, possibly, but there wasn't as much of a semantic signal, so it ranked worse, but surprisingly, it still ranked. Very surprisingly. Okay, more conclusions. Another thing we can conclude, obviously, is that exclusive EMDs rank better, way better. Um, if you recall, the orange-platoon-cucumber.blogspot.com outranked them all, right? Except for at the very, very beginning, where the new Blogspot uh, blogs I made outranked the, uh, the exclusive EMD. But not only, uh, only four days after that, we started to see a shift of it, of it floating to the top. And then a month after that, it floated to the top and it stayed at the top and it's still there. Even though it's an empty EMD, this one here, Orange Platoon Cucumber, is a complete empty EMD. There is no article there, but it is an exclusive, uh, matches that query exactly in one portion of the URL. And so that's telling Google that this is supposedly the most about that query. So is the further left better? Is it because it's in the, uh, it's in the subdomain uh, component where usually a www is found? Of course, you can make as many subdomains as you want. You can have beta.alpha.gamma.whatever.com. If we make it further left, does that mean it's going to be a stronger signal? Also, we'll notice that, also you'll notice that it is not a full domain. It's a subdomain, and it has two hyphens in it, and yet still it ranks very strongly. So here's another uh, uh, conclusion we can draw that up to two hyphens are perfectly fine. It's not hurting this uh, domain from ranking. And it's also the... Also the uh, the query, the keywords are in a subdomain. It's not orangeplatooncucumber.com, it's orange-platoon-cucumber.blogspot.com uh, that we got to rank. So the question is, so one, we can draw, obviously subdomains work well, so if that's the case, that'd be great, because that opens up a, the world of opportunities for anyone to rank any keyword they want. You don't have to buy that exclusive, uh, that exact match domain anymore. Now, the question is, would orangeplatooncucumber.com outrank all of those? That's not what I was testing for this experiment. I was testing whether forum profile uh, links ranked, and I was going to, uh, and I was surprised to find these other results, and, and so I'm happy to report on them. My next experiment is going to include that to see whether or not an exact match domain, uh, the full domain, not a subdomain, would outrank a subdomain, even if even if they were both exact match. And if anybody else wants to go and register orangeplatooncucumber.com and see if it outranks the rest, by all means, go ahead. Put an article on it or not. It doesn't even seem to matter until you get usage metrics involved. Okay, the next thing we can draw is that exact match anchors seem to rank perfectly fine. Uh, remember, all of the links I built, all 107 of them, to uh, Blogspot 1, 2, and 3 were all exact match anchors. According to this experiment, there is no kind of penalty. None of them suffered any kind of penalty, because if they one did, they all would have, because they were all using exact match anchors. Now, can I suggest in the future you just use exact ma all exact match anchors? No. <laughs> I doubt this is sustainable. I would use caution here. And if you have commercial exact match anchors, you have to make sure that you've, you've measured, you fluctuate these out. And a good rule of thumb that I like to use, that other people experiments have used, and this is just an opinion on my part, but I would suggest you use it, is that you'd be about 33% exact match anchor, 33% partial match anchor, and 33% URL links. And make sure that any link that's in a, a common bot area, so like a sidebar link, a footer link, these are common purchased area links, areas where people commonly purchase links. I would make sure that you try to make those look like attribution links. So you use uh, either either brand links there or URL links there only. Do not put put any exact match commercial anchors there. Also, I would suggest using, um, as I'm going to claim in a second, I would suggest using uh, uh, natural signals like good place for or get the best information on those kinds of uh, clauses in, in the sentence as well. Okay, not only this, but it looks like because WordPress 3 was ranking so highly, in fact, it outranked 
our top article that also ha that has uh, content and links pointing directly to it, that the WordPress 3, because the WordPress 3 blog outranked it, which is an empty blog, it looks like the only reason why I could say that is the case is because uh, subdomains do get some kind of domain rank. Remember, WordPress had many, many, many millions more links uh, linking to it, uh, to that root domain uh, in, in, in total, overall, than Blogspot uh, did. So it looks, we can draw two things from this. One, subdomains get uh, link juice from, from uh, the domain. There's some kind of domain rank that does carry over. And if you're going to make uh, blogs, public blogs out there, we'll make WordPress ones because it looks like there will be more powerful that the WordPress blogs would make the possible best buffer sites or ranking blogs because the domain rank does seem to carry over and WordPress has far, far more domain rank than uh, looks like pretty much all the rest of them. Okay, here's uh, three out of four conclusions. Also, you want to make sure that you get your maximum sites into SE Nuke, that you participate in uh, all the extra uh, features in SE Nuke uh, CR. XCR to get the maximum amount of sites in it because the more links that are made means the more links that are counted. Remember, I had 240 forum profile accounts successfully made, 170 confirmed links were made out of that, sent to the X indexer, and only 100 of those were actually end up being indexed and spidered in Google. So the more links, the more accounts you get made, the more sites you have to make them to, the more links you can make, and the more links that are get indexed. Furthermore, uh, we'll also notice another interesting thing. You notice here, let me go back to the SERP here quick. You notice that um, these are Orange Platoon Cucumbers 3 when the query is Orange Platoon Cucumber, right? The query is Orange Platoon Cucumber, but these says Cucumbers 3, cu Cucumbers 3, Cucumbers 1. You'll notice that it's still bold. Google will match uh, synonym variations, and Google will match singular to plural. So cucumber versus cucumbers. So just remember that when you're picking your, your exact match domains that um, you have uh, more options. Not only this, but another experiment that I recently uh, did showed that branded partial match domains will work just as well as an exact match domain. For example, if you, want, if you wanted to get the domain howtoloseweight.com, but it was taken, and I bet you it is, uh, because a lot of people search it, you would probably do just as well or, or not just as well, but very close to just as well, if you got a, a branded partial match domain like fixyourweight.com or, or solutions to weightloss.com, i.e. something that Google knows that if people are searching how to lose weight, uh, anything that talked about how to fix your weight or get a solution for your weight, that would probably serve the same information. And so if it has good signals, they might throw that up there as well. And I have an experiment that shows uh, some evidence that proves this. And uh, I can share that with you if you want. I just email me and I can send you the, the results of that experiment. Who knows, maybe I'll make a video out of it. It wasn't, it wasn't as, as sexy as, as all this information. So I didn't make a, a, a video out of it, but, but uh, there you go. OK, so the final conclusions we can draw is that, don't forget also, is that Google will seem to choose a sub page that has better or more signals or seems to be more directly on the topic and rank that instead if your index page is not clearly about that search query. So the conclusion to draw from this is to make sure only point your links at your best page or make your index page your best page to rank for that query. Make sure there's text on it. Gone are the days where Google likes to rank for long, for a long time, likes to rank a page that doesn't have any on-page signals that it's about topic XYZ. And if you're pointing links at your index page that has not got uh, XYZ topic on it, and you, and you want it to rank for XYZ, this is not the best strategy. You have to have a one-to-one -one correlation. Links about XYZ pointing to page about XYZ will help it rank for XYZ. Otherwise, Google will just choose whatever page on your site is about XYZ to rank for XYZ, even if it's not the one you're pointing your links at but it, it might not uh, have the best, strongest signal to make it rank for. So make sure there's a one-to-one -one correlation there. Finally, if you notice Google is serving multiple responses from one site in a SERP, that tells you that there is not much trust in that niche. Either there's not enough pages about that topic, 
or there's not enough trusted pages about that topic. This is not a problem to complain to Google about. This, you should take it as a ranking opportunity. If that is a niche that has any value for you or there's any money involved uh, in it for you, that's a ranking opportunity. Build out an MTEMD with a few links and an H1 and a title with the, with the keywords you want in it and see if it'll rank it up there. If it does, get some content on there quick because that's a quick way to, to see that one, wow, there's a ranking opportunity here. Google has uh, apparently not enough uh, pages to serve for that keyword because they're showing uh, three or four from the same site. And then two, so you rank an empty EMD up there, just give it a few links or even put any content on it until it ranks, then throw some content on it. And that's a good way, a very quick way to get access to that cert. Okay, so now we'll offer some speculations as to what the heck is going on here. Um, we see daily a Google dance on popular SERPs. The, uh, the Google dance is the rankings fluctuate daily. You see uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a site is in position one, then it's in position five, then it's on page one, uh, page two, and then it's back on page one, position six. We see that all the time. But we did not see this with our test SERP. Our test SERP from, February, from January 23rd to February 23rd, more or less that month, stayed completely static. At least the top uh, four or five or six uh, results stayed completely static. The question is why? So I have a hypothesis. My hypothesis is this, and I will go on to test it in the future, but this is my hypothesis, that Google's 2013 ranking is partially user metric based. Remember, on our test environment for Orange Platoon Cucumber, we had no usage metrics. There were no users. There's no searchers. There's no click-throughs. There's no time on page. There's none of that. None of the sites got any traffic except for literally one or two clicks from me. And it really, it really is only one or two. And I know because I have analytics installed on all of them. So it looks like this is the way it's ranking. It's working these days in, in, in uh, not in our test SERP, but in, in normal SERPs. A relatively small amount of on-page and linking signals, as we see with Orange Platoon Cucumbers, can get you to rank on page one or two. As long as you don't have any drawbacks, as long as you don't have any, uh, in this case, what we saw was uh, completely duplicated backlinks. They all seem to be de-indexed. Uh, so, and that page didn't even show up on the SERP unless I, I forced Google to show me extra results to show. So with a relatively small amount of on-page and linking signals, you can rank for page on page one or two, or you know, up, up to page five, depending on how competitive the SERP is. It looks like user metrics can get you to move up or down from that. Um, things like click-through rate, a bounce back to SERP and retries, and they try another site. This, I think, is equaling the Google dance. And I have an experiment that's already completed, and I'm gonna do another experiment to uh, complement that data. Uh, to, to show this. But right now, this is just a speculation on my part for you to consider. Also, another piece of evidence that this could be the case, and an, an, a good reason why we need to do an experiment to know for sure, is that John Mueller on a Hangout, John Mueller is a Google technician, he recently mentioned in a Hangout that the total traffic, returning visitors, the time on site, the site click-through rate, the internal click-through rate, all, were all specifically mentioned by Mr. Mueller as specific uh, usage metrics that they are looking at uh, for, for people who are suffering from Panda. So the, the end, uh, the upshot is better user engagement equals, inf for what he said, was better user engagement equals a better site. And this is what they're looking at for uh, quality algorithms like Panda. So I'm going to be doing an experiment to prove that in my, probably my next video or the next couple videos. Right now it's just a speculation, but for some something for you, for you to consider. The next set of speculations are this. Also notice they could already be using some kind of minor sentiment algorithm. If you recall, if I go back here to the, to, uh, the SERP, WordPress 3 was outranking, even though there's an empty EMD with no links at all, it was outranking our, our good content article with, with, um, with links. Now you notice that um, the titles are different here. This one is a review by Sam Stopper. This one is a good review of these fruit. It's possible that maybe they're doing some kind of sentiment analysis, right? That they that they are doing some kind of sentiment analysis. That the the the, the articles 
that, uh, or the reviews for informational queries that have a positive connotation to them are floating to the top. Again, John Mueller, who is the Google technician I mentioned before, who, who does leak quite a bit of information about how the algorithms work, has admitted that they are trying out some kind of sentiment analysis, and that is a good idea in the future to make sure that you have signals like, this is the best site, this is a great site, this is a good site for X, Y, for topic X, Y, Z. So, I suggest it doesn't hurt that if you're building backlinks or you're trying to choose on the sentiment to use for your site, if you're reviewing products or services, for example, that you talk about it being the best or the greatest or a good site. It doesn't hurt and it looks organic, right? If your backlinks say, hey, this is a great site for blah, uh, that looks organic. And if they're using sentiment analysis, it doesn't hurt. Finally, my last speculation is that something very interesting happened. For our or for spam backlink pages, they seem to be found and then de-indexed. Remember, Blogspot 2 had the duplicate text backlinks. January 23rd, it had 100 of them reported. February 13th, it only had 50 reported. So it looks like for spam backlink pages, in this case duplicate ones, they are found, they are de-indexed, which gives a correlative ranking change. But then it seems like they're potentially re-indexed because I said on March 3rd, they were found again. Take a look. February 13th, for the straight, uh, completely duplicated text backlinks, only 55 were, were, uh, were reported. But today, when I just checked quickly to see uh, what was ranking, uh, 104 of them were reported. And sure enough, Today's uh, SERP, you'll notice that Blogspot 2 is back on the SERP, right? It's still only showing this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, top 7 that people have been complaining about that they're doing for SERPs that they, don't, they can't trust the quality or don't have enough pages to, to show that they think are quality. And see, so it, it gets cut off right here. After that, it was results for similar searches on, on cucumbers or orange cucumbers. So that's all they're showing for orange platoon cucumber. But Blogspot 2 is back. And Blogspot 2 is the blog with the duplicate text backlinks that on this date, March 3rd, a hundred of them are now being reported again. So what happens is, so it goes up and down over time. February, uh, uh, January 23rd, there was a hundred shown. February 13th, there's only 55 shown. And March 3rd, again, it's up to a hundred, which seemed to provide a correlative rank increase. March 3rd, a hundred are shown, and it's back on the SERP. So what the heck is going on here? This is all I can come, this is, a, a, this is my speculation to try and answer that question. Is that the backlink, spam backlink pages are often found, they're de-indexed, then they're potentially re-indexed. Hence, there seems to be, this, I'm calling this the underdance, right? There seems to be two factors that are causing the SERP results to dance. One is this constant in, uh, indexation or de-indexation of links. And then the overdance seems to be what I'm going to argue is going to be the usage metrics, which I'm going to show in the next experiment. So what's happening here is that it looks like duplicated garbage or over-optimized backlink pages get indexed, like they were in January. The links are processed, and the rankings are as they are. Then the backlink pages seem to be analyzed at some point, either by Panda or Penguin or on an ongoing basis, who knows. And they get de-indexed, and then there's correlative ranking changes. And then again in March, so that was February, and then again in March, they're later recrawled and re-indexed again with core of ranking changes. Now that site's ranking again, and all the linking signals are reprocessed. And it seems to go on and on. So what, why, that doesn't make any sense at all, right? I expected, for this experiment, I expected that I would make the links, and I would check my code, that I would check my code here, that I put in the links, you can see I put them in the links, you can see they're all duplicated, and that, you know, it, it would go up from 20 to 30 to 50, I expected to fall full 170, which is the links I made to get indexed, but only 100 ever did, only 110 is the, the most I've ever saw this number ever go to. But it seemed to fluctuate over time, instead of going up constantly and staying there. So, all I can guess is that Remember, Google's built in a patchwork kind of way. And, you know, the original PageRank algorithm has, has, hasn't been, as far as we know, 
has not been uh, totally rewritten since Emmett Signal rewrote it in the early 2000s. So they've just been adding Panda, Penguin, Exact Match, Domain, page layout, page layout Algorithm. All those algos are like patches that are added on top. So it looks like Google's aggressive search for new content uh, causes them to keep spidering new pages, even if they've been previously de-indexed and adding it back into the index. And then they had to add patches on top of that to remove out all the garbage and spam pages that they don't want to have there anymore. And this also correlates with something that John Mueller has leaked once from Google in a Hangout, is that all of the pages that they de-index, they do come back after six months or a year's time. So how else can we explain, you know, this, could, this is speculation on my part. I don't really know to tell you the truth. I just find it fascinating, and I'm, I'm totally putting it out there for everyone to discuss and figure out why they think this is going on. But the, 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 the results are, are, are uh, speak for themselves. Uh, I, I'm sorry I don't have a screenshot from January because I didn't think it was important. I didn't ever expect this to happen. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, in January, the same amount of spun links showed up as straight links, and there was around 100. Then February 13th, I checked again, and, and the straight links were down to 55, the straight text that were all duplicated. And then March 3rd is up again, so it seems to fluctuate over time. Uh, and, and the rankings change as well. March 3rd, when the links are up, the rankings are up as well. So all I can guess, I'm, you know, this is a speculation on my part, but uh, all I can guess is that uh, they have an aggressive search for links, and then the, some other algorithm, maybe Panda or Penguin, who knows, goes and turfs out all the, the, uh, the uh, malicious duplicated content and the garbage kind of uh, uh, pages that seem to be low in value. And then they find them again and they turf them out again. It seems to go on and on and on. This is, this is why I call it the underdance. So I don't know how else to explain that, how, how that fluctuation goes on. Either way, the upshot from that is spin your backlinks. I mean, that's the upshot. We don't really need to answer this question. The upshot is that if you spin your backlinks, they seem to be uh, uh, counted. Because, as you recall, for the spun backlinks, if I go back here to the spun backlinks, these are the ones that have been spun. You can see these are all the spun backlinks. You can see they're all different. And 100 of them are reported. 100 of them have been consistently reported since uh, early February all the way up until now. That's still how they were reported. So spun backlinks, as long as they're spun and they look natural, they, uh, they, will, be, they will be kept. Okay. So... So that's the results of this experiment. You know, uh, take from it what you can. Um, it definitely seems that uh, uh, exact match uh, uh, links uh, see, see, help help you rank. It looks like you know, if you spin the backlinks, it helps you rank. It looks like forum profile links do help you rank. It looks like exclusive match domains that exactly match the query help you rank, even if they're in a subdomain and even if they have hyphens. And it looks like that there is some kind of domain rank, and that if you're going to use uh, blogs on some kind of public blog uh, network that you use WordPress because it seems to have far, far more link juice than any of the rest of them. Okay, so my next experiment is going to be in click-through rate and uh, usage metrics, and we're going to show how that also affects the uh, ranking changes. But until that time, if you have any questions about the, uh, the experiment, feel free to contact me. Uh, there's my contact information there. You can contact my uh, email at joshbrashinsky at gmail.com, or you can follow me at Twitter at Josh Bashinsky. So thanks for uh, watching this experiment and look forward to the next experiment where we'll talk about uh, click-through rate and usage metrics. Thanks very much.